Officials at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant say they've made a troubling discovery. Workers have detected a surge in the amount of radioactive cesium in a well at the facility in recent days. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials regularly monitor groundwater around the reactor buildings. They check for radioactive substances and analyze their effect on the environment. On Monday, workers found 9,000 becquerels of cesium-134 per liter of water in an observation well and 18,000 becquerels of cesium-137. The well is located between the number two and the ocean, reactor and the ocean. The amounts were about 90 times higher than on Friday. TEPCO officials say they can't explain the sudden jump. They're also unsure how the cesium is affecting the ocean. Workers have detected increasing amounts of radioactive substances in seawater near the plant since May. A sample taken last week contained the highest concentration of radioactive tritium recorded in more than two years. Japanese power companies operating nuclear plants have filed applications to restart some of their reactors. All but two of the nation's 50 commercial reactors have been offline for safety checks in the wake of the Fukushima accident. Power companies are seeking to restart a total of 10 reactors at five nuclear plants. The plants are located throughout Japan from Tomari in the northern island of Hokkaido to Sendai in southern Kagoshima Prefecture. The executives of the operators submitted the applications to the Nuclear Regulation Authority on Monday. The new safety requirements became effective on that day. Regulators will proceed to screen them based on their requirements. The 80 experts of the regulatory body will determine whether the utilities have taken all necessary measures to prevent accident like a meltdown from happening. Officials at the NRA say it will take at least six months to process each application. The Nuclear Regulatory Agency says their stricter safety rules are based on lessons learned from the disaster at Fukushima Daiichi two years ago. But does their new approach mean that nuclear safety is now guaranteed? NHK World's Yochiro Tatewa has more. The new requirements oblige plant operators to implement a number of measures. Operators must prepare for the highest predicted tsunami waves. They have to set up breakwaters and take other precautions to prevent seawater from entering the facilities. The new requirements also oblige operators to upgrade their backup power systems. A loss of power after the tsunami hit in 2011 triggered the triple meltdown at Fukushima Daiichi. In addition, operators have to build alternative control rooms to serve as backups in the case of accidents and they have to install filter vents that will remove radioactive substances when engineers release pressure from reactor containment vessels to prevent explosions. We aimed to make requirements that are the most stringent when compared to international standards. The question now is whether the measures called for in the guidelines will be fully implemented. The Nuclear Regulatory Authority's independence is being put to the test. 80 authority members will vet the application. Their expertise is crucial. And what's most important is whether the utilities will address the process seriously. The Fukushima Daiichi disaster revealed a lack of transparency on the part of the plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company. TEPCO is now seeking to restart another plant, this time in Niigata, on the Sea of Japan coast. But the plant is facing stiff opposition from the local community. The Niigata governor has expressed his profound displeasure. Why didn't you consult with us before you made the decision? TEPCO now says that it has given up its original plan to fight a restart application on Monday. Instead, it will try to gain local approval first. But the utilities argue that restarting the nuclear plants is essential if they are to stay in business. No matter what they argue, though, safety must come first before anything else. The utilities must move away from their history of secrecy 
they must transform themselves to be more transparent and accountable. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World, Tokyo. of Japan's Fukushima nuclear crisis has died of cancer aged 58. Masao Yoshida stayed at his post as manager of the plant when three of its reactors went into meltdown following the 2011 earthquake. He's said to have saved countless lives. TEPCO, the plant's operator, denies his illness was connected to his duties.